This is the Synology 723 Plus. It's a NAS storage device, which means network attached storage. It's a very high end external hard drive. Think of it that way. But there's a lot of features and we're going to dive into why you would choose something like this instead of just a off the shelf external hard drive, whether that be one that plugs into power and you connect it via USB to your computer or maybe just a solid state drive that's small and portable and has, you know, up to four terabytes of storage. They're a little bit more expensive but also a good solution. Why would you go with something like this? So we're gonna talk about why you would choose something like this and then some of the features and performance that I was able to get out of this device. Now, my use case is this. I work primarily from a 16 inch MacBook Pro I have an M3 Max and everything I do, whether it's editing photos, video, building websites, browsing the web, building marketing campaigns, whatever it is that I'm doing, I do that from my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So those of you that work from laptops know that the internal storage on a device like that is fairly limited. Being that I edit a lot of video and produce video content like this, I can't have a whole lot of projects on my laptop at one time before I run out of space. So I need some sort of a storage solution. Now, my storage solution has been external SSD drives. They're a bit expensive, but they're portable and they're very fast. You could plug one of them in through a USB cable and you have expanded storage right there. But I've been running into some issues with those devices. First of all, when I'm really taxing them, like editing video for a longer period of time and rendering out video, they tend to get a little hot and the performance degrades substantially. And there isn't really a good home for that type of device on my desk. It's just simply dangling from whatever USB port that I choose to plug it into. And I have to remember to eject it before I go and take my laptop elsewhere. I wanted something that was a little bit more integrated into my workflow. So when I need to grab my laptop and go, I don't have to worry about disconnecting anything. I wanted a simple solution. Now I've used Synology NAS devices in the past. I've always had one in my office probably for the last, I don't know, almost 10 years. And they're fantastic devices. They're great for backing up and keeping backups of data. But I wanted something that was connected to my computer that I could actually edit video from, which means it has to have some read and write performance. And I wanted a smaller device because I didn't want something that was going to take up a ton of desk space and that was loud because there was a whole bunch of hard drives in it. So let's talk about setting up the Synology NAS and then I'll jump into the performance and what I was able to get out of this device. Now the NAS was really easy to set up and get ready to connect to the computer. It has two bays, which means I could put two full-size hard drives in this device. And I chose to go with Seagate NAS rated drives, which I've used in other Synology devices, and I know they work well. I decided to go with 12 terabyte drives, which means between the two drives, I could get up to 24 terabytes of internal storage out of this device. Now, an added feature of this particular model is that you can add NVMe solid state drives to it that act as a cache. So let me quickly explain how that works. You've got the full size spinning hard drives, which typically on their own, one at a time are a bit slow. With the SSD or the NVMe cache, the device has the ability to load some of that data into cache so that it transfers much faster and you get improved read and write speeds. On top of that, you can configure this device to protect your data. There are different RAID configurations that you can set up on this device. Now, now, being that I wanted maximum performance and transfer speeds out of this device, I decided to go with a RAID 0. RAID 0 means that it's not doing anything with those drives, but marrying them together to double the storage. So two 12 terabyte drives together, about 24 terabytes of storage. Now, there are other ways that you can configure this. If protecting your data is important to you, you might go either with Synology's default RAID, which which is what they recommend when you're going through the setup process or a RAID 1. Essentially what that means is that you've got two drives in here and you have one disk fault tolerance. That means that if one of these drives goes bad, it's not a big deal. You could take the drive out and put a new drive in and then the Synology device will reconfigure both of those drives and spread the data across both of them. But the drawback there is that you don't get double the storage because you've got two drives in there. Say you put two six terabyte drives in here. That means you're gonna get six terabytes because the other drive is being utilized as essentially a ghost. And so it's copying the data and you have that data spread across two different drives. So you're not getting double the storage, but you are getting protection, something that you wouldn't get with a RAID 0, which is how I decided to configure this drive. And the reason that I decided to go with a RAID 0 is because this Synology is going to back up to another NAS that I have 
locally in my office. So installing the drives are really easy. You simply pull the caddies out, slide your hard drives in. It's best to utilize the same types of hard drives. You don't necessarily have to go with NAS grade hard drives, but I decided to go with NAS grade hard drives because I have a lot of experience of using those in the past. They are designed to work in an environment like this, a high demand environment where you are sending and receiving files quite often, maybe even streaming files from this device. And so those drives are meant to be worked harder. I then installed two NVMe drives that are one terabyte each for the cache through the panels on the bottom of the device. Very easy to slip those in and snap them into place. Within a couple of minutes, I had everything installed and I was ready to power up the NAS. Now on the back side of the device, we have two LAN ports. I run a Ethernet cable into my laptop so that I can get the fastest transfer speeds through my internet connection in my home office as possible. And so simply what I did was take the ethernet cable that typically is plugged into my computer and plug it into the NAS in the LAN 1 port. I then took another ethernet cable and ran that from the LAN 2 port directly into my laptop. Once I powered up the NAS, my internet connection resumed and I was able to connect to the internet through the ports on the back of the NAS. Simply this acts as a pass through. And so very simply the internet will pass through the NAS, but what's great about that is that I don't have to have my computer connected to the NAS in order to get access to my data. This becomes a device that's connected to my network. And if I'm remote, if I'm off site, I can connect to the data that is on this NAS remotely. And that is one of the big big positive sides to using something like this as opposed to using a basic external hard drive that you would plug into your computer. If you take your computer with you and you have to unplug that external hard drive from the USB port, then you're not going to be able to access that data. So if you find yourself in situations where you wish that you had that external hard drive with you, but you don't, a NAS is going to be a great solution for that problem. So the setup and configuration process of the Synology is pretty quick. So once it's powered up, you go to a web browser and connect to the NAS and go through the setup process. The setup process includes creating an account, choosing your RAID type, and then setting up the SSD cache. Now going through this process can be a little bit confusing because there are lots of options. So if you decide to go with one of these, come back to this video and look at the different steps that I went through as I configured this device. Now once it was configured, the first thing that I wanted to know is can I edit video directly off of this device. So I decided to do a speed test first and see what the speed test looked like. I was a little concerned at the speed test thinking that it wasn't going to be fast enough for editing video directly from this device. Editing video directly from an external storage device is probably gonna be one of the more taxing things that you're going to do. And so if I'm able to edit video from this device, chances are you're gonna be able to do pretty much anything that you need to do from it as well. Now, while the transfer speeds aren't nearly as fast as say a external SSD that you might have connected over a USB cable, the Synology definitely proved itself to be fast enough to edit a 4K video project and full resolution playback, which usually is not the case if you're accessing files from a slower device. Even when I went to render out the video, I didn't notice any decrease in speed and rendering, whether I was rendering it directly to my computer or to this external device. The transfer speeds were fast enough to be able to keep up with the exporting of that file from my computer directly to the Synology NAS, keeping in mind that it's also reading data as it's writing data to this device as well. Where I noticed things were definitely a bit slower was copying big files over to this device. If I was copying files over to an SSD that's directly connected to my computer, that's gonna be fast. I could copy files really quickly and be on my way. This is a bit slower because the read and write speeds are slower. This is not connected over a USB cable to your computer. It's connected over to the network and that's a little bit different of a process, thus a little bit slower. So beyond this simply just being a fancy external hard drive for your computer, it has a lot of other features that make it beneficial as well. I got tired of paying for extremely expensive cloud storage like Google Drive or Dropbox, and this device acts as your own personal Dropbox or Google Drive because it's constantly connected to your internet connection. Even if your computer is not connected, so long as the ethernet cable is still plugged into the back of this, you can access the file files and everything that are on this device remotely 
from a different location. And that for me is a huge selling point. You can also install the Synology Drive app on your computer, which keeps local files synced with this device, kind of like having Dropbox. And then they also have an app available for your smartphones so you can access files on the go even when you don't have your computer. You could do other cool things with this device like use it as an email server. There's also a photo storage app on here that's kind of like Google Photos but fully managed on this device. And so there really just is a ton that you can do with this. It's way more than external storage. It's having your own personal server that yes, is an external storage, but also is a cloud storage device, a media storage device, and a server capable of so much more. So for those of you that are looking for a desktop storage solution that provides more than just being an external hard drive, something that you can use whether your computer's connected to it or not, something that keeps your data safe and protected if it's configured appropriately, then the Synology DS723 Plus is an excellent solution for that. Synology does have different size devices than this. This is just probably the best option for a desktop solution. And what's great is that it also has built-in USB on the front of it. So if I wanted to do something like backup SD cards from my cameras directly to the NAS without having to go through the computer, I could just plug into the front of this device. Or if I have other hard drives that I wanted to offload data onto this NAS, I could just plug directly into it and copy data straight from that device to the NAS. So definitely a great solution for desktop storage that goes well beyond that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, check out the links in the description. I've got links to this device as well as the drives that I used to configure this. I also recommend if you're gonna use any of the other services on this device, like maybe using it as an email server, using it as a photo backup, or using the Synology drive, which is like the Dropbox feature, I would expand the RAM in this as well. It is a server, it has a processor in it, and it also has RAM. And just like your computer, it needs RAM in order to perform well. And so I opted to expand the RAM. I just ordered some off of Amazon and installed it. It was also really easy to do. And I'll link to the RAM that I chose in the description below. But that's gonna do it for this video on the Synology 723 Plus, an excellent desktop storage NAS, which as configured, I know I could get five years plus out of this device without even having to think about it. Protect your data. Don't leave it up to a standard off the shelf hard drive that's going to fail in a year or two and just not be accessible unless it's plugged in. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.